Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now you might notice straight away that this kit is a little large to be putting onto the little spinny thing which I normally like to have going around at the start of these videos. But that's because today we're tackling terrain. So this fella can step aside for a second and we're going to be looking at the terrain crate box. This is the industrial sector from Mantic Games. Now this is just one part of the kit that I managed to put together. I'll show you some more in a second. But same as always, we're looking at a really easy method of getting game ready terrain on the table. We're not pushing the boat out too far. This is really simple. And as always, all of the paints used will be listed in the description below. So let's get started. So before we go on to the painting, I thought it would be useful to actually get a look, first of all, at the kit itself. Now, this might be reminiscent to some of you who are familiar with the old Cities of Death terrain from Citadel because it works on a very similar principle. Now, what you'll find when you open your box is a ton of these little plates, and you'll notice each of them has these wee holes in the sides here. Now, the outside connectors just clip on like that, and they will give you a flat wall, or you've got these little weird wiggly internal ones, which uh, <laughs> they're quite a mission to figure out the first time you see them. They clip in and they let you start doing 90 degree stuff. So internal walls or even ceilings and such like that. And with just those two shapes, you end up being able to make, you know, whatever building you fancy. Now, like I mentioned, there's quite a lot in here. So for scale, here's one of my 28 millimeter miniatures. Um, as you can see, they're pretty decently sized. Even the smallest of the three that I've built uh, is gonna fit, you know, a squad or a handful of combatants in there really easily. As well, I've still got enough here in <laughs> my box of spares. I actually haven't finished building all of the scatter terrain that comes with the kit. There's a whole uh, conveyor belt system that works. Uh, it's really cool. And I've got still enough parts that I'll be able to make another thing sort of this size. So yeah, you're not really hurting for options. Now there's no instructions in the kit because it is really designed that you just go nuts with the construction set so you've really got to you know have a bit of a play around and the fun part with that is that it's actually really easy clipping them out and then sort of laying them out and getting ideas that's half the fun of these things so let's move on i'm going to pick this one back here because i like the look of this uh, grating in the center let's get started painting that one and i'll put the rest of this <laughs> huge amount of terrain aside for now now, keeping this in shot is probably going to be kind of a mission, because it's enormous. Now, you'll notice I am wearing a little uh, latex glove, reason being because I'm going to be handling this quite a bit, and part of it's probably still going to be wet while I'm using it. I don't want to smudge it too much. Um, I'm not really worried if I do, because I want quite a grimy finish. Now, those of you who've seen me paint terrain before, we're not going to push the boat out too far, but there might be a surprise here. I'm going to start out with a cheap acrylic paint, uh, this one came from, I think it was the hardware store, of all places. Just go find yourself something cheap and simple, because all we want is a warm brown. Burnt umber is going to be really good for this. So what I'm going to do is, you see I've used this for a bit of terrain already, just squirt a wee dollop of that out. And you'll notice, unlike our ordinary acrylics, that's quite thick. Like that little dollop is holding its shape. But not to worry. I've got... A makeup brush. <laughs> I'm just using the biggest brush I've got my hands on and I'm going to just work that into the bristles a little and then start jabbing this all over the miniature quite roughly. Um, I'm not really worried if I leave any areas black. If I get blotchy coverage all the better. What I want is something that looks like that on each of my panels. So I can dry brush it in some areas, I can jab it in others. Uneven is the name of the game here. Now in just a few seconds, that's done. And if you do nothing else with your terrain ever, I still strongly recommend grab yourself some burnt umber or similar and just give it that rusty brown because it will look leagues better on your table with just that. But of course we can do better. So oh, let's throw that violently to the table. Now, I couldn't find a sort of craft equivalent for a silver. Uh, you might be able to, and if you do, certainly use that because it'll work fine. But what I've got is gunmetal here from the Army Painter, and you'll probably see me gesturing with one of my makeup brushes again. So let's work that into my bristles, and you'll probably see where we're going with this. We're going to start dry brushing 
all of the miniature. Pay particular attention to you know parts which would actually be exposed metal. So these railings, for example, I've got a little bit extra brush, brush, a little bit extra paint, and we'll just quickly flick over those. But once I've got most of my paint off my brush on these areas, I'm then going to start just flicking towards the edges of other panels. And I'm doing that off screen, so that's wildly unhelpful. Uh, as you see, this will very quickly just pick out some of the edges and make them look properly dinged and rusty. Now for some areas, once you've gotten your paint off your brush, you can start stippling slightly more paint rather than dry brushing it if you've got an area that you want to look more like worn metal. So these fan blades, for example, and the ring around its edge, I'm going to stipple this on. And then as I run out of paint, there we go, I will start dry brushing another area. Now again, this is something that takes only a couple of minutes and yeah, just, just do it. You know, you can have your terrain painted and on the table in the space of a couple of minutes. It's not fabulous, but it'll do the job. But we are going to add some color here. Now what I'm going to turn to, instead of a brush, I'm using some of this blister foam packaging. Uh, you can get this, you know, auto metal miniatures from somewhere and you'll generally find you have this. I'm going to fold it just in half like this. I'm not going to tear it up like I normally would because I want quite a large brush. You might see where I'm going with this. So what I've got here, this is some Avalanche Sunset straight from the pot and I've dabbed just some of it off onto a bit of tissue paper. What I'm going to do then is start adding some color to some areas. Uh, I want to avoid bits which I want to stay looking rusty or metallic. But you'll see we get this really cool, uh, really ragged edge to... Can I get that in focus? Goodness me, the size of this thing. Um, I generally find I have more control along edges if I approach from this direction. So I'm going to stipple on my yellow quite heavily. And yeah, just dodge areas that I want to stay grimy and messy. Now that's taken me probably about 10 minutes of just jabbing away with my little sponge. You can go back over areas if you want a more solid color, but I like that rough, it's been sandblasted by the elements kind of look. Now I'm going to move on. I have another one of my dry brushes and we're going to use Hexos Pale Sun, which is a dry paint, uh, but you can use any old sort of lighter version of what you've just stippled on that you like. What I'm going to do is just dry brush some of the edges of the panels because I want a little bit more depth to our uh, building here. Don't worry too much if you do end up scrubbing a little bit of it onto your metal because such a bright color you'll probably not notice too much. But yeah, as much of this as you like the look of, you can go ahead and dry brush now your yellow or red or blue, whatever color you're using. Now with just that dry brush, we've reintroduced a fair bit of depth to the miniature. And I do this ordinarily because I don't want to have to shade the whole thing. Even on these flatter panels and slightly smaller builds than some of the large workshop kits, uh, that's a lot of shade to be putting onto flat panels. So I figure our recesses are plenty shaded with our burnt umber from earlier, and a dry brush does the job just fine. Now what I'm going to do, I'm actually going back to my gun metal because there are one or two areas that I want to brighten up a little bit and I can also use this as a tidy up stage. So I am just going to stipple this straight onto the fan blades so that I get this uneven but more solid silver color. And I'm also going to flick this along any areas where I might have gone overboard with the yellow and very quickly <laughs> tidy up these areas. Now honestly, from this stage, it's really up to you how you would want to finish this off. Um, I'm going to paint in just a couple of little details like the screen here on this access panel, maybe this power thing, that'll look kind of cool, but otherwise I'm not too worried. I don't want to spend a lot of time on really going overboard with it. So to that end, check this out. I haven't done any of that cool stuff to the inside. Now reason being, when it's on the table and you're looking at it from this angle most of the time, that's not going to matter. And honestly, your opponent is only ever going to see the other side of it as well. So once you've got that rusty brown gunge on the inside, uh, I don't know. 
I like saving the time. I don't think it makes enough of a difference to really bother spending that extra work on. But, you know, if you do, then, well, just paint it the same as you did the outside. It will look fine. So I'm going to paint in those couple of extra details now. Now with just those couple of extra details complete, well, there's our terrain piece finished. This took me no more than about 40 minutes to an hour at the most. You could paint up a whole box of terrain in a day. Easy peasy. Now as well as coming back and painting the uh, computer screen in, I've also used just some thin lines of strong tone to give the impression of rain marks and what have you. Really very quick to do. And all important, let's get a look at what it looks like with somebody on it. So let's chuck this fella up here. And then suddenly, yeah, it comes to life. So with that fella there, you get an impression of how large this actually is and how little time it therefore took. And I think the result is pretty good. The kits themselves, yeah, I really enjoyed putting them together. So they definitely get a recommendation from me. Thank you again to Mantic for sending them along. So as always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who have helped me keep doing this, including producers Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Fred, and Connor. Your support is invaluable, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free. Drop them in the old comments box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.